NYC was good. <laughs> we in the house, all right, okay. It's a big, this is a big crowd tonight. All right, real quick, some of y'all may not be familiar with poetry shows, and I don't know if we've given y'all a proper introduction, so real quick, let me see you snap your fingers like this. Don't do that at this show, please, oh my gosh. Oh, it's just an example. Please do not do that. I've worked too hard on my poems for y'all to give me two fingers. I need all 10, all right, 10 of them. Thank you, 10. <laughs> all right, uh, turn to your neighbor, say, um, people tend to look out for themselves. Do it, turn to your neighbor. <laughs> Even if it's your, your spouse, it's true. <laughs> people tend to look out for themselves. So I travel a lot. Uh, this weekend, I think yesterday was my 67th flight of 2018. Yeah, so if I give you tips about flying, just know I know what I'm talking about, okay? So I'm about to give you a tip. I'm also really tall. Is there any really, really tall people out there? Some of y'all just look like you're trying to speak in faith. You were confident, though. You were confident. I appreciate that. <laughs> Ah, so I travel a lot and I'm real tall, so I'm always looking for leg room. So here's a little trick. Here's, usually they try to charge you a lot of money for the, for the extra seats, because airlines are thirsty. <laughs> but instead of paying for it ahead of time, just wait to right before the flight. They always wait to give these seats up last minute. And you go up to the gate agent and you say, excuse me, sir, madam, may I have a seat on your exit row? And then usually they'll just give it to you for free right there. Yes, sir, we'll give it to you, right? Unless it's like Southwest and it's like first come, first serve. It's like the Greyhound of the air, so. <laughs> and they stop everywhere, just like, okay. But here's the thing, though. They're going to give you that exit row seat. There's a catch. Because when you get on that seat, they're going to ask you some questions that you wasn't prepared to answer. They're going to ask you, are you aware that you're sitting on an exit row? Yes. <laughs> and then they're going to say, are you willing and able to assist other passengers off of this aircraft in case of an emergency? And this is what you're going to do in that moment. You ready? You ready? You're going to lie. <laughs> you're going to lie. <laughs> Trust, Trust me, it's cool. I do it all the time. <laughs> You're gonna lie and say, yes, yes, I'm willing and I'm able to assist other passengers. Because here's the thing, here's the thing. You don't know. You, you don't know if you're willing or able to assist anybody in any type of emergency. Let's just start with the fact that you don't know if you're able. Let's just start with that. <laughs> you ain't you ain't read no pamphlets. <laughs> ain't watched no YouTube tutorial videos on how to exit anybody off of anybody's plane. You don't even know if you're willing. You don't. You don't. Because when, when things start really getting, getting excited, planes going down, everybody's freaking out, and it's your job <laughs> to assist other passengers off of this aircraft. You're going to think to yourself, you know what? I like me better. Because <laughs> uh, here's the thing, in high pressure situations, people tend to look out for themselves. This poem has already started. It's about commitment. I buy toothpaste and body wash and lotion, all in travel size containers because regular size is too much of a commitment for me. <laughs> I used to fly only on Southwest. It's the only airline with two free check bags and no cancellation fees. I can plan to come with enough baggage for two people and still back out at the last minute. There's a metaphor in there somewhere one time, one time she gave me a map and a book of the world's greatest cities. She told me to fly somewhere every month. 
It's actually not that hard. So every month I fall asleep in the sky and wake up in the arms of a new city. It makes me feel like I don't belong in one place. Most people have fear of flying, but I have fear of staying. Last time, last time I saw her, I was afraid I would miss my flight. She was afraid that I wouldn't come back. Her eyes told me, we know a frequent flyer when we see one. Know the wave of men who dissolve hearts into sand and make them a summer vacation spot. She tired. She tired of me packing promises in travel size containers, just small enough to get past her security, but still be disposable. She said, she said, it's hard to love a man whose only commitment is having options. You've made a bed out of airport seats. You believe there's always something or someone better waiting on the next flight. You forgot how to go home. You forgot how to stay. When will you learn love is a firefly? You will never hold one if you try to hold them all. When you attempt to be everywhere at once, you become fragments. Broken cremains of emotion and bodies scattered in bedrooms, trying to gather the dust and present yourself whole. No wonder it took so long to find yourself. Omnipresence is a skill humans will never accomplish. I lied. I lied to her on the phone. I told her it just wasn't the right time. The truth is, I feared commitment like a bloody cross. I feared a love demanding of a crucifix that bids my selfishness to come die 10,000 deaths and then some. Every day, you bury yourself in the soil so she can be a rose. I'm afraid she'll expect me to love her, expect me to be a cathedral for her suffering or these shoulders to be altars. She cried. She cried, I am more. I am more than your exit rolls and departure gates, and you have so much more to give than your excuses. Flying away is actually not that hard. Staying is. <laughs>